Hi, everybody. Welcome to the QB School. I am JT O'Sullivan. Today, Brock Purdy, keeping it going. Fired up for this one. Let's get it going. Welcome to the QB School. Before we dive into the video, a quick reminder about the Quarterback School Patreon community. This group is the foundation, the bedrock of the channel. Not only is it a great, cheap way to support the channel, but you get even more Quarterback School content. So I'm really trying to create the environment of what it's like in an NFL quarterback room, all sorts of nuance, detailed depth about not only the quarterback position, but high-level offensive and defensive football. Hop over there, join, become a member. I appreciate your support. The link is in the video description. As for this video, let's get into it. Brock Purdy, the Niners. 49er faithful, I'm about to get in the feelings right away. We're coming up just a tick short. What probably should have been a touchdown is ends up being a nice play from 33, no doubt. Corner recovers, makes a nice play. Your favorite motion. You know, this thing just comes out a little flat. And Ayuk runs a really nice route here on the perimeter. Now, again, I'm not going to pretend to tell you that I know every single thing about this offense because I do not. <laughs> But this route up top is a, strictly a thing of beauty. Come out here just a little stutter, and then he gaps him. So that's a winner right from the jump. And regardless of, okay, you put the little you know bumper motion on it, widen them out, you, know, you talk about the effort here if you want to. No idea when you're ever going to throw that. But this dude right here has got some art to him, some craft. And this thing just comes up a little flat. So to me, when I say flat, I mean the ball – comes out flat as opposed to what you would imagine, you know, a little bit more of a arcing, drop it from the rafters, down the field throw. And again, for me, it's always going to start from the ground up. And when you see him move, this just looks uncharacteristic from Brock. So when he needs to get that extra juice on this thing and throw it like from the warning track, we lose our base. We've got more moving parts. This thing just comes up a little short. And the guy makes a nice play too. First watch the route up top. Well, uh, got him. Okay, that's a big win. First quarters, you got him. Now watch Brock's footwork. Click. Right? Click. Now watch the ball. Flat. And it's a nice play. Beautiful job with the left arm reaching out there, hitting the ball. But this is one of those ones where, oh, man, this is a touchdown. Right out the gate? I mean, yeah. You can just hear it in your head, right? Listen real closely. Good click. Flat, and it's a hell of a play. I mean, that's a hell of a play from 33, no doubt. But it should be a touchdown. Damn. Next one here. Nice little chunk. We're going to hit 19 down here at the bottom. I'm going to call this an over. You know, it's not my favorite route. And again, I know I'm going to be in the faithful feelings here right out the gate. We're thick. We're in the mud. Okay. First off, seven-step drop. If you know, you know. Okay, and in a bad way. The one thing I will say is if we're going to do a seven-step drop, I love widening the edges with coach's best friend and a great tight end. Okay, so that that's the first part of it. So we make the edges wider. Okay, so sniffer, sniffer, wider edges for that seven-step drop. And the reason that matters is because you're going to get deeper on a seven-step drop. So you're going to have more room to move up. But if you don't, if you have an open edge, it's easier for these rush guys to just run right at you. So wider they got to go a little bit longer of a loop. Now, this guy, this route to me is just pure speed. This is just a banana. And now, again, the thing that's nice is that he carves it back. So that's, to me, the part that I like. The part that I don't like is the banana part of it. So instead of just bananaing it over there, come over there with some intention, give him something, nod on him, stair step him, and separate across. Because, you know, yes, he's fast, but you got to make it a little hard on the corner, right? Watch this route to the bottom. Blur. There's no suddenness. He's just running over there. Now, at the top of this thing, watch how he carves it back. Bring it back to go catch it. That's outstanding. But because he does that, it ends up running 50 yards for an 11-yard reception. Can't be the intent of the play. So I would like to see the route be better. Again, acknowledging the fact that seven-step drop, just because it's not for me, doesn't mean it's not for them. Love the wide edges. 
One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Look at the pass protection. Drop eight. Yes, please. Nice throw from Purdy. He's surgical in that intermediate area. Get it going. Next one here, touchdown pass. So this one is funny, right? Like I, I think you have to look at this as funny. The effort from 19 here is laughable, in my opinion. Now, some people might say that it is designed to be laughable. And if that is the case, I acknowledge the fact that I disagree. But I will admit that if someone's playing 4D chess and it's just above my level of understanding, I've got to acknowledge that's certainly an option. Okay, so if the play is for him to do his jog, chill, be dropped, like sleeper play, good for you. I would argue that what would happen if the corner just bumped out and they played normal quarters to this, this play, not that great. I would guess that this is much more designed to be full speed. <laughs> I don't know. It's an NFL field, full speed, fake, and then you've got to clear the rail because we're probably working something where we're going to get to the corner with an over. It just, it, it, but, <clears throat> and if this is the play, and we're just chilling, chilling, and we know that they're going to drop them. Hey, man, that's some 5D chess. What the hell do I know? I love it. Either way, this, again, is another one of those examples for me of when people come at Purdy and just say, hey, he's a system quarterback. You know, he's got throwing to guys who are wide-ass open. Great play calling, popping guys open. I mean, how can you catch the ball on the four and not have anyone around you for 10 yards? Obviously, to me, it's much more of a bust of coverage with 19 doing 19 things as far as effort. Now, again, it gets rewarded. And it looks great, and you can make sense of it if you want, but I'm going to disagree. And again, it works versus the Cardinals in Week 15. We're all going to find out together if it works in January and February. Next one, another just faithful, tough pill to swallow. This is your weekly Bryce Purdy refusing to throw the deep pylon corner. And again, hey man, the dude is having an unbelievable season on so many levels. And if he doesn't want to make this throw, he doesn't have to make this throw. But when you turn on the film, and I feel like I watch damn near every week, and you see an opportunity for a big play. And to me, I'm going to call this back pylon flag deep corner right, right here paired with an in. You know, this in to me is almost a turnover worthy ish throw. I mean, this could certainly be intercepted. Guy plays it well. This, it just feels weird because I would say the guy sees the field so well in this intermediate area, right? He plays with great anticipation. He does a really nice job in the quick stuff, but the intermediate stuff is where he's just surgical. It just feels like, like almost like he, the vision part of it, he just doesn't trust. And maybe it's the arm. Maybe it's his own understanding of his own capacity. Good for him if the, all those things. But they keep calling it, right? Like this is a weekly thing. I would want to throw that just to have people stop telling me that I couldn't throw it. Now, maybe that says more about my own issues than his issues. And he's a hell of a lot more secure than I am. Probably all of the above. But to me, this is there. Throw it, dog. See that corner down here? Settle. He's not getting any depth. He's running because Debo's route, not good enough. I mean, he's he's running that in before 19 is at the bottom. That's an that's that's about as easy of a read as it gets in the NFL for a shot down the field. Ayuk is gonna score. Maybe not score. Big play. 30 plus play. As opposed to predetermining it and just ripping it in because you're so confident with those things. And again, I wouldn't make such a big deal about it because it's one play, but you know if you've watched every game, this is every week there's this opportunity down the field that we're just turning down. So maybe Shanahan doesn't allow him to throw it. Maybe it's just a glorified clear. It can be all of those things. Only they know. But when you turn on the film and you're trying to say, hey, you know, why do people keep coming at Purdy about certain things? Why, why doesn't he get all his kind of praise that he deserves? It's because of turndowns like this, in my opinion. Next one here, third and five. A little quick out up top to Ayuk, post-shift. 
This is a beautiful throw. Accuracy, anticipation, precision. Now, is it a fastball? No. Okay. It's not. It's got a little bit of a touch to it, which I'm not sure it's supposed to. But it is perfectly placed. So again, you can maybe see some of the limitations as far as the quote-unquote arm talent or fastball capacity. Because if this isn't a perfectly thrown ball, this is six the other way. So watch just the precision of this thing. I mean, if that's behind him at all, it's the other way. It's a perfectly placed ball. It is perfect. And now, a few things here. First, the anticipation. He goes to throw it right there. You can see Ayuk at the top, not out of it. Now, if you went to the corner, to Debo, it'd be a big hit too. I love having multiple winners. Talented group. You know, the thing I do want to talk about with this route, to me, this is a tweener route. So I'm used to outside wide receivers playing with their inside foot up. So anytime I see a wide receiver play with his outside foot up, to me, you're starting to get into like the tweener world because a lot of these routes are counted off steps. So we're going to go, Ayuk's going to go his inside foot, three step out. So left foot, left foot, left foot, and then he's into the out. That to me is kind of a tweener out, not quite a quick out, not quite, not quite an intermediate out. But the precision of this, the anticipation of this, the spray angle of it creates just enough distortion that we can get this thing in there. Because this is a tight, I mean tight window. And again, when it works, it is outstanding. I mean, that is precision. Watch the steps. One. Two, three, full speed. Ayuk's got a great ability to keep his stride through these routes. And that is a dot. Again, at some point, at some point, the ball won't be perfect because this has to be perfect. So I just want, you know, keep it all in perspective here. This could easily go the other way. Now it doesn't. Okay. And if ifs and buts were candy and nuts, we'd all have a Merry Christmas. But damn, this is a dot. This is a rough one. So for me, we get Brock Purdy hit here. Yeah, I think he comes out of the game after this play. It's a hell of a play from Brock Purdy. This is a part of this offense that he brings to it that we just haven't seen from other quarterbacks who have played in the system recently. His ability to create. I put the wrong angle in here. But this ability right there. Just that little flick. Now he takes one right to the face. I thought it could have been easily been a penalty here. Touch to the HC boy. Now good on you. Now the thing that stinks here is just the pass pro doesn't quite hold up as, as well as you would hope. Because this looks like we're trying to get Ayuk on this little drift. So right into this area. And it looks like if you're going to catch quarters... And this weak side or strong side safety, this opposite side boundary safety, is going to hang in here and, and make this thing blurry on the drift. They've got the answer. And the answer is Kittle, who if you know, you know, we need big plays. He's going to get him on a nod on that kind of like big Dino post. So if this safety were to hang like he does, this thing is going to be a massive hit. So again, the play action game, there's, there's nobody better at dialing up and having guys pop. Watch this thing, but keep your eyes right on this safety. So if that safety hangs on Ayuk, right there, you can see him hunt him up, right? He turns. We've got Kittle up top. That's a touchdown. But because we don't hold up, right guard or center, center, Jesus, thundered. Hopefully he got tripped. We've got, you know, the fullback deciding to cut people at the line of scrimmage on a big shot play. The guy he cuts gets up and hits our quarterback in the face. Now, granted, he's rewarded with a reception, but that's because 13 is a playmaker. So a lot of moving parts. This should be a big shot up top. Instead, our quarterback gets hit in the face. We find a completion because he's a playmaker playing point guard, but we're not good enough in pass protection. Let's see if we can tell if the center gets tripped. Ooh, I don't know. Maybe the guard trips him with his right foot right there. We'll say he does because he gets thundered. <laughs> Again, do you need to pull the guard? You know, I don't know. It's certainly there. It's going to be a big play. If we can get it off to Kittle, we can't. Instead, we get our quarterback crushed in the face. 
for me, and I just, I, I want to continue to make sure that I'm like as clear as I can be, because I know that there are a lot of people who really care about this team and this team is really, really good, but it's stuff like this for me, the pass protection unit where we are, we're pulling people. Okay. You want to, you want to get that action going to try to get these guys to step up so that we can hit this drift right behind it. Okay. I'm, I'm all for that. I, I get it. But we're putting our center in a tough spot versus a three technique. We're asking the fullback to cut the edge when we're going to take a shot play down the field, right? So we're we're faking this, and then we're coming up trying to hit the drift, no, and then we're trying to get to Kittle on a big shot over the top. That takes a long time to hold up on a cut. So just a lot of, again, the, the pass protection choices just make me nervous because keeping 13 healthy is such a priority for this team. And shots like that aren't helping anybody. Next one here, third and two. Love this from Kittle and Purdy. This to me is very Kelsey-ish from Kittle. Almost takes that shallow and like spikes it. Kind of like what you would do on old school mesh. No cert, but just how mesh is normally played. Now this is not mesh, but this is Kittle just running to grass. So watch 85, kind of work that shallow. It's not there. He sees the green and goes right there. So that's just spike. He and Purdy are on the same page. And then look at the touch. One hand catch. If it's Darnold, he's dropping that thing. Purdy, right on him. One handed catch. Hell yes. So design wise here, not going to pretend to tell you what I, what the read is. I can tell you though that the new number one looks like it's there on time. So again, short motion 19. He's up to the corner. We've got Kittle working on the shallow, and then he takes that thing and just spikes it because he sees the green grass out here. Looks like we've got Ayuk on what I would call a basic or an in, and then where I think probably the ball should go, right here, the new number one on this kind of like follow. Whether that's a choice or a follow, it doesn't really matter. That's really the only thing that's there on time. Now, again, how they're reading that, couldn't tell you. But not a lot of options. Again, what I love and what I think is underappreciated, even though I feel like I say it multiple times every week, is Purdy's ability to create. So this is special. This is this is creating kind of in and out of structure. So he's not bailing. He's trusting the protection. He's hanging. He's moving. His vision's down the field. That's not the design play, though, I would guarantee. Okay, that's not like leak or shallow spike where we're designing that thing. That's Kittle getting over there. And then he goes. It's beautiful. That's a hell of a throw, man. Oh, my goodness. Wow. Beautiful play. Big time first down. Halftime. You dig the channel and you haven't already, please like, subscribe, hit the bell, get the notification. I really do appreciate you subscribing to the channel. It means a lot to me. So thank you for taking the time and doing it. Again, the quarterback school Patreon community. You know about it. Join, become a member, get even more quarterback school content. We also have quarterback school courses. Now, these courses are the premium content available through the channel. These are deep, deep dives on my favorite football topics. We have a course on RPOs, tempos, pass protection. The best-selling course is how to beat every coverage. We even have an entire offensive system available for you. So hop over there and enroll. The link is in the video description. We also have a bunch of free resources available. Check out those also all linked in the video description. Finally, make sure to follow me across social media platforms. I appreciate your support. As for this video, let's get back to it. Next one here, touchdown pass. Beautiful job. Not only play call, this is about as pure progression as you get, but also design. So start in three by one bunch, get to two by two, get the bump motion. We're going to go right to left all the way across the board. This is number three or number four in the progression, and Purdy makes it look easy. Now, again, it helps when you're throwing to essentially a wide receiver who's also the best running back in the league. But again, this is beautiful design. I come after this drop back game a lot. This is one of my favorite pure progressions when they incorporate everybody with viable options to actually win on these routes. So here's the shift. Here's the bump. The actual play here is going to be probably a must outside release go. Here's that quick out. So that's kind of one to two or one in general. You're going to get Kittle on the shallow. You're going to get Debo here on the return or loop. So he's going out and then back in. And then where the ball ends up going on that little follow or Texas. 
So you just read this thing right to left, right? So if you like this, alert it, great, take it. One, two, three, four. See how everything is coming into your vision? If you're starting over here, you just go two, three, four. It's a really nice design. Great job, also great pass protection, but Purdy plays this thing so quick. It's his processing. One, two, three, boom. Balls out, wide open, touchdown. They make it look easy. That is not easy to do. That is a full field progression on a pure progression, meaning one, two, three, four, doesn't matter what the coverage is. One, two, three, boom. Just see how quick it is. Watch his helmet. One, two, three. Awesome. Next one here, I put this one on here. This is like a prevent situation right before the end of the first half. To me, this just looked like about as unsettled as I can remember seeing Purdy as far as his drop, real choppy, kind of moving when he doesn't have to move, goes out there, throws a sinker, just kind of uncharacteristically sloppy. And again, it's a weird situation because it's kind of a prevent. You're trying to get a chunk, take a shot before the half. Again, just one of those plays where I think his feet get away from him. So watch the drop here. We've got Debo, the number two up top, running a deep hook. Watch Purdy's drop, just how underneath it is. See how he's kind of like choppy, 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 right? One, two, three, and then choppy, 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 right there. And then he just goes, as opposed to trusting it, hanging in the pocket, or just kicking up and keeping his base. So watch the footwork here. When he, You can see the lane, but it's drop eight. It's prevent. You're going to need a chunk. You're not going to need a run for 10 yards. So he takes off to run as opposed to just staying in his base. You can see 19 at the top right of the screen. Run, sinker. That's a throw he can make in his sleep. So just keeping your base, understanding the situation, knowing that it's drop eight, miss. Next one here, third down and 11. This is my favorite throw of the game. This is outstanding from Purdy. This is a non-traditional Tampa pressure look where we have a free runner in the C gap and we hit big 85 for a big chunk if you know you know and you should know the thing is beautiful watch this hot throw we're hot to the right free runner C gap we hit a vertical hot got to have a vertical hot in any sort of like normal traditional trap coverage this though is non-traditional Tampa so they're going to get at the snap here to what I'm going to call Split field coverage. They're going to have one of these guys running out to the middle. You've got these rolled up corners, right? These are flat defenders. So you can't do like the traditional uh, run a flat or throw a wide type hot. You've got to hit them with a vertical hot. So they're running essentially all go with McCaffrey on a Texas. But this is outstanding. And again, I think this has been, this was what I remember from Purdy last year when he came in and played. I can forget who it was against, maybe Miami, where he just hung in there and threw a perfect hot. This is, this is, ear must be here, okay? This is a fucking perfect hot. Free runner, right in your face. You've got to throw the hot. Vertical, right? You can't have like a, a hot or peak hot. This is a vertical peak hot right on him. It's, it's literally beautiful. This is art from a quarterback. Free runner right in your face. <laughs> Look at that. I mean, they're playing Tampa. From that look, it's so good. It's so good. And it turns into a big chunk play. Don't blitz Purdy. So design-wise here, pause it. We've only got five people in pass pro. This is why pass protection is so important. So the offensive line is turning to the left. So they're going here. And that means we're going to get a squeeze look here potentially. So these two have the two most dangerous to the right. So if all four of these people blitz, we got to have an answer. So these guys are going to squeeze down. Squeeze. You're then going to have your free runner be the guy who runs the widest track. And so all this means is if this guy blitzes, he's going to be free. But he's the widest guy. So the quarterback has to take a drop and know that you've got to get it out on a vertical hot. And you don't know who's dropping out. Right? Like this guy could be dropping out. He could be dropping out. Who knows who's dropping out? But if all three of these guys blitz, if all three of these guys blitz, we need to have a hot answer. And he does. This is what I'm talking about when I say you want a hot to your face. This is the pitcher look. 
right at you with a vertical high because you got rolled up corners. It's awesome, man. This is so good. So good. Boom. There just aren't a lot of guys in the league that have the capacity to play like this. He does it consistently. He's done it since the second he stepped into the league on the field. It's awesome. Next one here, touchdown pass. Now, <laughs> again, we're going to get into the feelings here. So first off, I think this is a really nice play from Purdy. He creates this thing. Now, would it be there just design-wise? Probably. But the center takes an L. I mean, I don't know you know, what more you can say there. Because the L, Purdy's got to go create. It's a good enough throw. I think McCaffrey actually makes it hard on himself the way that he pedals into catching that thing as opposed to just running. But the design, the first thing you should notice is that it's a seven-step drop. Okay, Again, at least they have the wide edges. Okay, Now, versus this team, it doesn't matter. They're not getting close to the quarterback. It looks like we're going to get Debo. I, I'm going to guess he's supposed to come back out of this thing with the over because whether they allow McCaffrey to do this or this is designed, we're faking it to him. And then it looks like he's supposed to run like a check down or an option. And one of those options is just to take it if he sees it. And if that's the case, that's awesome football because it's there. This is going to be a big hit if it's in structure. But because we take an L right in front of our face, Purdy can't even finish his drop. He doesn't even get to seven. He gets to six and then goes and creates. And again, it's wide open. But for me, it's only wide open because Purdy is able to escape. Not everybody can spin out and make this play. I just I I refuse to believe that everybody can spin out and make this play. Now again, if he just keeps running, I think this ball is perfect because he pedal, 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 pedal for five plus yards. Now he's got to make a circus catch, get up, and still score. So yes, it's open. But is it open because of scheme? Certainly part of it, because McCaffrey is going out there and he's got the ability to do that. Okay, that that is this is rare from a running back. Just watch that. Uh the ding. <laughs> Just the timing, the body control, the kind of hezzy in the air, like the ding, the ding. Got him. Okay, but by the time McCaffrey is making that move, Purdy's already gone. He's already escaped because our center takes another L. So we're, the center's got to stop stepping on people, give himself a chance. But Purdy, create, vision, good enough ball, good enough catch, I should say, and a touchdown. <laughs> Next one here. This is a bummer. Yeah, this is a shot up top to Ayuk. I'm going to call it a stutter go. This is almost like a non-traditional quarters look, if that makes sense. But we're going to catch one-on-one -on -one outside the numbers. It's a beautiful route. I think the thing that really, really hurts my soul is this is, I'm going to say, a really good throw. I think Ayuk's eyes are in the wrong. So when he comes out of this thing, he looks back, and he looks back flat, like Purdy hasn't thrown it yet. He forgets who he's playing with. That thing is in the air. And you can really see his eyes from this angle. So watch when you, he turns around right there. To me, his eyes are flat. And what I mean by that is he's looking back at the quarterback as opposed to eyes up where the ball is. So we've already thrown this ball because we play with great anticipation. So when he finds it, all of a sudden he's like, oh, no, I got to go. As opposed to knowing he's got to go because he's tracking it the whole time at the correct spot. So it's that little subtle difference. And again, it's just about being able to know where your eyes are supposed to be when you come out of it. You can see him kind of readjust. So flat up. Oh, shit. Now, again, would you love to have him obviously be able to make a play on the ball? Yes. Okay, thanks, Captain. But I really feel like this ball is pretty well thrown because I am I think a lot of people have been on Purdy about some of these deep throw opportunities. Yes, I know he throws the ball down the field more than anybody, but it's a lot of the intermediate ones as opposed to these deep bombs. You can see him going to throw it right there, right? The ball's out of his hand before Ayuk is looking. So Ayuk hasn't looked, hasn't looked, hasn't looked, hasn't looked. Now he looks. The ball's halfway to him in the air, but he's looking back at Purdy. Now he looks up and the ball's over his head. So again, I, I just feel like if he would have looked at the correct spot and caught it earlier in the air as far as seeing it, this is a good enough throw and it should be a big play.
It's just that little bit of precision of detail that seems to go astray from this offense on these deep, deep shots down the field. So right here, at least he throws it. But things that are, look so easy in the intermediate game get stretched here and way more difficult deep down the field for this group. The very next play, third and seven, we're going to try to rip an out to the number two up top. We're playing with great anticipation. The ball's just a little bit outside. For me here, Purdy's moving to his left, drifting to your left. The ball's naturally going to go to your left. So drift, 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 move, fall off. And I mean, look how close it is still. Be a hell of a catch from there. He just misses this thing. Again, the pocket movement here, a little uncharacteristic. Move to your left, 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 left. Fall off to your left. You can see him fall off as he gets kind of stepped on from 71. That left toe, that does not feel good. Right there. Oh, it's going to cause the ball to go to the left. Then if you think being a coach is frustrating, even for a team that is really good, watch our guy. Okay. Two plays in a row. You just had that stutter go opportunity for a big play, right? Overthrow. Missed it. Looked in the wrong spot. Right here, we got this out for our first down. Perfect call. I'm telling you, competitive people locked in right here. Not happy. Damn. <laughs> They're beating the hell out of somebody. Still getting after it like that. Watch the anticipation. Again, he's going to throw it right there. Great anticipation. We just get stepped on. Ball falls off to our left. Just that little bit of difference makes that thing uncatchable. So again, all these things have to go together. It just feels like sometimes, and again, I, I know I say it a lot, but the drop back game for this group compared to everything else they do is just nowhere near as precise. We got, you know, getting stepped on is going to impact it. Just a tough one right here on third down. Damn. Next one here, another tough one. If you know, you know. We're going to get a little naked keeper going up top to the left. Or Kittle on the over. Bit of a dangerous throw. I think he actually does a decent job of settling him up in the hole. But this is one of those ones you'd love to have. I mean, I think this is certainly good enough from Brock Purdy. It's a little bit of living on the edge. Kittle knows he should have it here. Again, as good as anybody play calling wise on these naked keeper games for as long as I can remember. You can see here the throw kind of settles him down, stops him to protect him from that corner. Everything except the catch. So I thought this was pretty nice from Purdy here. Not an easy look. No catch, no return. But you can see here, it's just one of those things where you got to be really cognizant as you come out on these things. If you've got, they're almost universally, is someone in the flat, someone in the over, and someone going deep. Okay, that, that's kind of how these naked keepers work. If you're going to do it like this, and I feel like more and more teams are doing the front side flat route, so just kind of chill. That's a perfect guy to chill into the flat. Then you're going to have that over coming across. Now, if you have a cloud or rolled up corner, you got to really be cognizant of this guy coming back and, and taking this thing on the over. So you got to make sure he's there. And I thought Purdy does a pretty nice job of settling him down with the throw so he doesn't run into that collision. And again, if you're all about reactions, check out Shanahan here on about the 37, throwing up his arms, catch the ball. You would have caught that thing at Texas for sure, Kittle. <laughs> right on him. Boom. Hands up. Damn. Tough one. I thought pretty nice though from Purdy. Not an easy look as far as being able to throw that thing down the field. But again, really as good as Anybody, I think of he and Tua as these kind of like intermediate throw, like surgical precision guys. Just a really nice job of settling him down. See how it stops him, protects him from the hit. Just gets knocked out. Last one here, touchdown pass, bottom of the screen. Debo again, this time back shoulder. Thought this was a pretty impressive throw. Wide side of the field, back shoulder. Nice adjustment from 19. Maybe a little bit lower than you would love a back shoulder, but still certainly good enough. I love his base. He's lined up to the left. Really nice adjustment. Body control from 19. No surprise there. This is a pitcher look. So you catch that press, right? Nobody over the top. Who knows what coverage this could be? You know, they got all these guys coming across, end up being quarters. So you end up getting that one on one outside the numbers that you want. When he goes to throw this thing, they're even. 
right? So they're right there. Perfect opportunity for a back shoulder. Really nice job from 19 adjusting. Really nice job from 13 being lined up, getting this thing out on time. Look at him lined up to the left, right? Look at his feet. Outstanding. Pass that thing right there. You can see 19 still not past him at the bottom of the screen. So it's a back shoulder candidate. Nice job finding it. Great body control right at the pylon. Just a really nice job. Not an easy throw to the wide side of the field. Good job with the coverage identification, finding the one-on-one. -on -one. Let your playmakers make plays. Again, really nice job. This was one of those games where it, the score makes it look a little easier than it was for them offensively, it felt like. So that is a wrap. Brock Purdy, the Niners continue to roll and really make it look easy. I know we really pull this thing apart on this channel and try to kind of point out the details about maybe some of the things that don't go their way, but they make so much of this look so easy. Not only the run game, but the talent on the perimeter, the play calling, the level of play from the quarterback from Purdy, just been so consistent, so high for the vast majority of the year that you almost take it for granted. Now, I think when you look at the All-22, specifically in this game, there continue to be some of these missed opportunities. Now, the first part here before you freak out and come sideways at me, it's never or very, very rarely, <laughs> if ever, going to be perfect or close to perfect. So you're always going to have some missed opportunities. It just feels like with this offense, this group, the missed opportunities are a little bit more consistent than maybe some other teams that are playing at this high of a level. And what I mean by that is some of these shots down the field, you would just love to, I, I want them to hit just so that you, everybody, myself included, just relax, relax a little bit. Like take a deep breath. I think they can hit these shots for whatever reason. Maybe Purdy doesn't throw some of them. And that in and of itself might be a bigger issue than missing some of these shots. I think some of the details as far as where Ayuk's eyes are coming out of double moves or maybe the ball decision to be a little flatter than maybe it should be, it just gets exposed the further away the throw is away from the quarterback. And because Brock Purdy is so surgical for the vast majority of the time and plays with such great anticipation in the intermediate game so that it's magnified the misses because it looks so different than the intermediate stuff. But I really like watching Brock Purdy continue to play. The dude, especially the hot, that hot throw, the vertical hot versus the non-traditional Tampa to Kittle was just such a thing of quarterback art, man. I absolutely love the play. I'm excited to see what these guys look like as we get into more and more meaningful football. I really do think it will be the story of the year as far as can this team find a way to put it together and be the juggernaut, really, that they've shown to be consistently over the course of the year. Can they do it when it matters most? I don't think that there's necessarily a reason why they can't do it other than the fact that we got to keep everybody healthy. And again, you know, some of these things I think put unnecessary strain on the health aspect of it, but they're going to do what they do at this point. So we're just along for the ride. Certainly a fun ride. Thank you so much for hanging to the end. I will see you next time. Have a good one.